the new Parkway Theater, where good food, diverse entertainment, and community create a place for everyone. For showtimes and special events, check out www.thenewparkway.com. You are listening to High School of Five and where real talk is our vernacular. Uh-oh. I don't know what type of pride you niggas got, but two point five million dollars, nigga, we winning, dog. Go ahead. Two hey. point. Hear that? Hear that? Gay community. Listen, if I didn't make it clear, listen, my name is Adaris. This is not Rayon anymore. My you name is Demarco think? Fleming. I, that's we gonna call him Demarco Fleming. That's <laughs> cool, whatever. But listen, we talking about money. Y'all were talking about giving free hand jobs. I ain't, I ain't with that. But now, do we two point five million dollars? Listen, two point five million. Can Demarco Fleming show listen, him, uh, What listen. is he again, Jared? A power top. Are you gay? I'm bisexual. Are you top or bottom? I'm a top, dom top, aggressive top. Dom, dom top means, which means I grab you by your back and neck, put your face down, ass up, and fuck the shit out of you, and have you walk crazy for days. That's what the dar is, 2.5 million. Yeah, 2.5 million, I'm weak doing all that. Who is we? <laughs> <laughs> Today's show is sponsored by the White Horse and Pride Month. What are you doing? Oh, 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 it's loud. Sunday Pride Night, man. Well, y'all about ready to start the show? I got another round of Trump, Mary, Kill. <laughs> no, 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 Jerry. You better say that for several weeks from now. <laughs> I only did two rounds. I had a third round. That was a really good one. It had y'all tripping. Mm-mm. Pedro would have been calling all kinds of irregulars. All right, today's sponsor of the show is uh, the White Horse shout out sponsorship. Are they playing what you gonna do for me, dude? I don't know what they're playing. They're playing all kinds what of you music. Gonna do so. for me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can catch us at High Score 510 on the Instagram, the YouTube, and on Twitter at Horcrux Hipster. And check out our Patreon page. Uh, support the show if you can, if you can afford it. You can spare a few bucks a month. Be a patron, get exclusive content, bonus conversations, and uh, help keep this show from going broke, which it already is. This show's so broke, man. I, I, I actually, I actually applied for food stamps the other day. This show's so broke, man. And I got Section Eight. The Section Eight homeowner. Hey, there is a provision we can actually own a home under a Section Eight law. Oh, okay. Well, Pedro, man, everybody in California y'all need to do that. Can you move to Arizona, or is it only in Arizona? No, 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 no. It's uh, it's nationwide, but I would suggest everybody in California look into the program. I forgot what it's called. Shout out to Adarius. Check out that Section 8 housing, home ownership. Man, I, I, I remember before my building had Section 8. Way different. I didn't have a fight just, that just broke out right now between a woman and her man. Didn't have, didn't have stuff like that. Well, uh, yeah, support the show. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, we are here with. Uh, this is AG3 coming at you faster than so on a wish he has. Still had summer vacations. Be careful what you wish for. Mm-hmm. Telling everybody, be careful what you wish for. I used to always tell people when you work and they'd be like, oh, you work in a school, you get a summer vacation. And I say, hey, you know what? Sometimes it ain't cracked out. Woods, but, you know, you need some money. You need this and. You off. You you get a solid paycheck. Be careful what you wish for. Careful what you wish for. You might get it. Got to get the goo together. Anyways, uh, I just realized I had to have my mic plugged in properly, so I was on my headphones. Oh, you over here talking shit about my sound. I'm sure my audio didn't sound as good as it normally do. Here's your sound bite, Aaron. Here's how you learn how to make your man uh, like you and desire what you want, which is love. All right. Equate how you feel about your vagina to how we feel about our time and our space. You understand? What we have to do to get busy, the things we have to do. Now, I can't fuck you against your will. You got a desire to want to fuck me. If I fuck you against your will, that's rape. Now, if I'm on the phone and I say, look, I got to go, and you say, well, I ain't got to go. I want to talk to you some more. You are raping my time. You are something from me. No means no, bitch. I said I gotta go. 
That would have been better if it didn't have that shitty ass song playing. I don't know what that shitty song was playing in the background. It's horrible. It took away from everything you hear. It took away. It took away from it, Jared. It really took away. You know I mean, I can't believe you. You gave me that shitty sound bite. Uh, sh- shout out to Patrice O'Deal, RIP, coming on our show. And we are here with everybody's favorite truck driver, Captain P Funk, coming at you faster than NBA players trying to block a three point shot. Here's the sound by Pedro. Blown a motor? Never blown a motor. Huh? But uh, I've blown a trans. Wait, which car? Uh, no, it's a uh, he, he him. Yes, he gave him that one in honor of Pride Month. <laughs> it is Pride Month, Pedro. Have you ever blown a trans? <laughs> no, I ain't had no irregular. <laughs> oh, Glizzy King is here. The Glizzy King. In honor of Pride Month, the Glizzy King has made it in a dice. And we are here with. What's up, y'all? It's Captain Glizzy. It's like Captain P Funk, but can go to Glizzy's. Uh, smoking Glizzy's with your granny because she likes the dogs 12 inches. If you didn't know, Adarius is also the king of misunderstanding. Captain Glizzy and the king of misunderstanding. I, I'm not that, but okay. It's nice to meet you all. Well, the dude who threw your computer monitor at the uh, Salvation Army is probably, he's like, he he got you beat by a couple stages and levels, but but y- y'all on the same path. <laughs> Here's a sound bite. I was thinking about this all night. So, if it's say that it kills 99.99% of bacteria, right? So, boom, right? I Boom. Okay. I'm using it. Right? L- listen, listen to me well. So, Bow, I just killed 99.99%. That means there's 0.01% left. Guess what? Use it again. Bitch, that's 0.01%. Now they dead. So now you killed all 100% of your bacteria because you just use it twice. I believe you're going to play that idiot right there. Terry, Terry, you, I, you, you I, might be I, staying I'm off really your phone. what misinformation means to you, because, like, that's just an idiot, Jared. <laughs> no, I need Jared to stay off his phone, <laughs> Adarius. You, like, know, like, you, don't, you shouldn't even argue about misinformation and this dude being an idiot. You should be arguing, <laughs> Jared, you're on your phone way too much if you're looking up shit like this. This episode is not only brought to you by Pride Month, but it's also brought to you by Irregular Internet. Yeah. All right, all right. And my name is Jared, aka DJ Art with two T's for a double dose of that tink tink. The D is silent, so it's just Jart. If you gay man, cause you know you gay and stuff. Okay, thank you. He gonna go gay balloon cause it's got all the colors cause it's gay. Okay. And I got Skittles cause it got a rainbow on it. Okay. And I got the cook cake. It's a <gasps> be who you are for your pride. Thanks. This is my pride month. Why did you do this? Why are you doing this? Why? Because you're gay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of fine. I... That's funny. <laughs> yeah, Jared, Jared, I'm sorry to get you nothing this month. <laughs> <laughs> Question of the day. How are y'all spending pride month? I'm spending pride month the same way I spent Black History Month, the same way I spent Valentine's Month, the same way I spent most months living. Living, not disrespecting nobody, letting everyone be who they are. So it's like I do every month. Well, this Pride Month, I made sure to go in and bother every uh, LBGQ's uh, social media pages, make complaints about them visiting kindergartens, trying to push gay on the kindergartners, just like Trump told me to in DeSantis. I'm I'm focusing on this Pride Month only on one or two days. I plan on reading James Baldwin, but only on the 15th or 16th until Juneteenth is over. I will only be doing it for three days of, of gay authors who are black. If anybody has any trans authors or anybody else a part of the LGBTQIA community who are authors, uh, I will be reading them only around Juneteenth. All right, so I'm going to get my double dose of gay and blackness. I was thinking about reading the Bible because that's the original gay black book, but um, I might just save it for James Baldwin. I hope you guys have a wonderful Pride Month. And to all our uh, listeners out there who are in the LGBTQIA community, we uh, want to wish you the best best month and representation possible. Listen, 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 listen here. I want I want all the people and the listeners to know that we are serious allies. I mean, 
we so serious. Well, Pedro might not be, but but we are we are so serious that Jerry will suck your dick. Okay, we are real allies. <laughs> Aaron will give you a Father's Day hand job. That's coming yeah, up. Aaron will give you a Father's Day hand job. I will I will cook your dick. Nothing to do with allies. That's not nothing to do with anything. That's just Father's Day, man. Look, I just want to. That's celebrate. a whole separate thing. That's so Father's Day. That's Father's NBA, a, NBA Young Boy Father's Day. Father's Day is a part of Pride Month, though, Aaron. So you will yeah. be given hand jobs. I, I, I'm, but it's not for Pride. I mean, it's for it's for thank you hey. doing a good job and hey, uh, hey. and spreading I, your it, genetics it, with the right. Aaron, Aaron I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care if you used a paper map, Google map, or ways. Well, you still arrived at the same destination, brother. You are here giving hand jobs on Pride Month. Yeah, and I'm telling you what it's for. It's for thank you for being selfish, trying to get some that night, not using protection, and having your son make the NBA. It's Father's Day NBA hand jobs. You be asking to move Father's Day to May then, nigga, because you giving the gay hand job. I'm going to line up you know T. Morant. Hey, hey, call it whatever you want. The reason I'm giving it is I, because I, of your love I, affair I, over I, NBA dads. I've never heard. And wait, I'm not the only one. This podcast is giving hand jobs. So you're going to be right there next to me. You tell me <laughs> this. You choose what lubricant you want. We can you. I got three of them. I got some good old Astro Glide. I got two K-Y. And, and Ben I'll Gay. Use, so whatever use, one you I'll want. Use, I'll use KY. I'll use whatever you want. You but use I'm KY. Just... I'll use Ben Gay for anybody that's a little more serious. This is a, this <laughs> a Aaron, Aaron rapper, giving them man. sweet heat hand jobs. Yeah, yeah, Aaron, we could do. We could do. We could that's do that's when I I can blow a little cold air and you switch it up. <laughs> we could do a little. We could, we could do. We could do peppermint dick hand jobs, Aaron. I don't really care, but I will yeah, be I acknowledging some Shaq's icy hot too. We could do icy hot hand jobs, all that, but I will be acknowledging that it is Pride Month while I'm stroking other niggas' dicks. So that I don't worked, know what you're talking coming. about, but I'm I know hey, hey, I'm coming. Is, my man. strokes are coming real. Hey. If Father's uh-huh. Day would have fell on Christmas, my strokes are coming either way you want it. However you want to rate it, Pride Month, Father's Day. Hell, if it would have been Christmas, if you would have been blowing up T. Moran on Christmas, so you would have got the strokes in then, too. If it so fell on far, Christmas, uh, Aaron would be sitting there stroking and screaming, Praise White Jesus! I would have been but using I, candy canes. Uh, I would have melted candy canes and used some of that juice. Father's Day is cool, but I am I am stroking chickens on the name of the Rainbow Disruptors, Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like we have a, a, a action packed Pride Month in store. <laughs> yeah, I like Pride Month at the Indy 500. I don't say pop tonight. I'm well, just. I'm glad that we get to celebrate Pride Month and the slaves. I mean, the um, gays freedom from slavery. <laughs> Pedro, whatever. Pedro, you crazy. And news this week. And news. Ron DeSantis, Ooh. he has effectively defined what woke means. Earlier this week, Donald Trump came out and said he doesn't like the term woke. Here's a clip real quick. It's gone sick. And I don't like the term woke because I hear woke, woke, woke. You know, it's like just a term that use half the people can't even define it. They don't know what it is. Yeah. Have no fear, my people. Ron DeSantis came out and clarified what woke is. He described it as a form of cultural Marxism. Look, we know what woke is. It's a form of cultural Marxism. It's about putting merit and achievement behind identity politics, and it's basically a war on the truth. And it has corrupted institutions, so you've got to be willing to fight the woke. We've done that in Florida. We proudly consider ourselves the state where woke goes to die. What do you guys think about Ron DeSantis clarifying what woke means? Yeah, I'm... I, wish, I, I wish this was a podcast where woke goes to not be talked about. <laughs> I like the way Erica Badu explained it. She said woke is awareness. That's all it is, okay? That's all we need to know. And Jared, this is also a sports podcast, and I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I told you we have a show for this. If you want to take me up on my offer so we can get some sponsors, get some money, get paid for it, we can do it on that show. Pedro, just whatever I'm you do. I'm tired of this gay talk, and I'm tired of woke being woke. Pedro, listen, my, I'm just going to give you some quick advice. I know that you probably have some good ideas on you and Jared doing an alternative show. Listen, whatever you do, you got to be a part of the show every week. Because if you leave for six weeks, it is not your show anymore, nigga. So I just want you to know this right now. If you don't know, you got to be a part of it every su- fucking sucking dick second or you will lose your show, nigga. I don't. I don't want a show. I want Jared to have a show, and I was going to help. <laughs> no, 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 no. That don't work. I don't Jared. want a show. 
Uh, oh, so if you helping Jerry, yeah, no. you might as well just call it over. No, I want I want us all to be on the show called the Society Report. Oh, yeah, you can't come up with a better name than that, Pedro. No, I can't. I mean, I'll think I think the Sanchez will come up with a better name than that. Uh, let's yeah. call it the Bobear Report. The what? The Bobear Report. I like that. Uh, Trump, Mary Kill, Lauren Bobert. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> If you didn't know, Marxism is an economic and political theory that examines the flaws inherent in capitalism's capitalism and seeks to identify an alternative. So I guess you could say in some way, yeah, maybe it is a cultural Marxism. I don't no, know. it's not. He uses Marxism in all the wrong way. You can ask a Professor Ken Jowett at Cal who <laughs> taught a class on Marxism and Leninism, and that was definitely not how Marxism is supposed to be used. I don't think he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, well, Marxism, in the way it was explained to me, is that it was a critique. It was a, a political theory that's mainly a critique of capitalism and its development and evolution. It looks to see what are better alternatives for the improvement and betterment of the people, because in the economic class, it's uh, it's capitalism is just an extension of feudalism and the lords and the, the, the kings and queens, and it's just they just... Re- rebranded and repackaged it and people don't have the kingships but you still got the corporate kingships and whatnot but anyways Ooh, uh, here we go. There, there, shout yeah, out to right Ron DeSantis for helping us uh, better understand what woke means in other news Mr. Fab has one more tip about pimping and this video on Instagram says listen to free game this is free game for everyone man I just want to say one thing we just came out of the show. It was an amazing show. Sold out show another night in Oakland. And we came outside, right? Come get close to this. They didn't bip the box chair. Let me say this to the to the bippers right here. Hey, bro, y'all gonna do what y'all do, and we realize that we can't stop the bip. But let me tell you this. On some player shit, on some keeping it G, if you gonna have a little honor in your game, old schools belong to a nigga that's from the city. Old schools is something that's supposed to be classic. Old schools is to be protected. We don't bip old schools. Don't bip the old old schools. Is supposed to somebody that's somebody trophy, man. They didn't work hard for that. Listen, what I'm telling you, man. You got to respect the game, bro. We don't bip old schools, but them is off limits, bro. Y'all gotta respect the game, bro. Cause uh, bro, that's some that's sucker shit, bro. This a nigga trophy, bro. This a nigga DB trophy, bro. A dope boy trophy from that era, man. Don't bip old. Hey, man. I- Hey, what do you guys think about Mr. Fab? This is what he get, man. This is what he get, because, you know, you can't glorify it and then be like, hey, I worked hard for this. Nigga, I worked hard for everything I do, too. Excuse my language. Man, I work hard for everything I do, too. No, no, no. Excuse your saw. language. Call him a nigga. The nigga ain't got no sex. That's exactly what he is. He had no problem when he's putting out the other videos. Hey, man, this is what you got to do. No, nah, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. All of a sudden, he coming out holding a plate of some greasy ass fucking collard greens, a, a styrofoam, a styrofoam to go thing that can't even close. Pedro, you got, you got, when you got mad, it sounded like the uh, trailer for the Transformers Rise of the Beast. Hey, look, <laughs> because I'm so sick of niggas. Like, everybody yeah, else Yeah, don't you work. ain't got no problem until it hits you, man. Old school, we worked hard for this. This is a trophy. No, man, everybody worked hard for their car. You <laughs> made I, I, one I, payment, you worked hard for your last car. Time, last, time, last time I defended that nigga, I will say this time, he sounded like a dumb motherfucker. Listen, Mr. Fab, usually I'm on your side with these things, but I must say, bro, you starting to sound like the niggas doing the bibbing. Exactly. Uh, Still getting this real money. By by helping your community, selling some food in your community, or selling some weeds the regular way, you gonna go and steal, you big fat black nigga. What's wrong with y'all niggas? What's wrong with you? Chicken niggas, that goofy shit. And I love old school. No, yeah, you, yeah, you don't touch old school. Don't do, touch old school, but don't make a reason behind it, you chicken big lip, chicken eating nigga. God damn. Shit. You wanna Wait. see why people can't stand this? That's some s- s- the silliest shit I've heard. This nigga, Pedro, where you quote? You quote your everybody. Gym, you get you you quote, quote your Jim Crow lexicon hey, right now. Where hey, you get man. these words from? Hey, I need Negroes to be smarter than that, Darius. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir, Massa. Yes, sir, Massa. In this video, you see him talk about it's like somebody's trophy. They work hard for that, and then a the nigga just stands on the hood. <laughs> That's right. In the video, if if you if you check if you check if you look at the video. Mr. Fab's own advice from the last bipping session, he doesn't even follow. You're supposed to have your windows 
all the way down. Remember, Mr. Fab, your windows so niggas can't break in. What happened to all that, huh? What happened to having your windows down? Fucking idiot. Don't pip the old schools. Um, but it does kind of hark me back. Um, if there's any type of honor in the game, there's not much honor in breaking like breaking into random people's cars and taking shit out of their car. <laughs> Especially some of the bipping that's going on when people are in their car driving, stuck in traffic, motherfuckers are bipping and then run and then jumping in the car and pulling off and shit. So um it remind Darcy sucking meat out your goddamn teeth, nigga. Snorting and sucking shit out of his goddamn teeth. <laughs> at least he ain't bipping on cars. At least he ain't bipping cars, I guess. Let's be real. The fact that he came out, called it bipping and all that, it's not bipping. It's stealing, all right? Don't try to change the name up. Don't try to glamorize it. Don't try to hood glamorize it and do all this and that like he was doing with explaining by this stupid ass name, bipping. No, it's stealing. You're being a goddamn thief. And then once you're the victim of it, don't sit out here and try to come out with the video about it. Well, I, I remember a uh, shout out to uh, Darius's good homie, uh, Rafa Casal. He had a little Instagram video where he was loving the bip or he was talking about the bipping. And he was, it was, it was, it's one of those things where he was hyping it up in some ways indirectly. And there's a culture within the bay, which I don't understand, which seems to be like there's almost like a, a fun game to it, or it's like it's it's part of the the common culture. Like it's something you just got to deal with. No, man, it's it is stealing. It's unfortunate. But just in case you guys don't know the etiquette about bipping or stealing, as Aaron would say, um, you don't steal out of classic cars. <laughs> don't bring up his fake ass, Jared, talking about <clears throat> culture of the bay. That ain't culture, man. That's like saying, hey, man, we can't get mad at Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, because guess what? NBC had a culture of rape. I know you don't like it, but you need to stop shucking and jiving. We got a problem. That's a good point, Aaron. Aaron, I, I double down on that. I don't even want to say it again because like it's that. cancelable. But I double down on that. Matt Lauer also. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, regular internet time. Did y'all know that snakes poop? Have you ever seen a 20-foot snake have a bowel movement? Well, you're about to see it right now. And th thankfully, it's actually on the floor, which means we don't have to clean the cage. We just have to clean the floor. But that, oh, Man, now the smell comes. Now the smell comes. It's not. It doesn't smell good. I can be honest with you with that. You gotta remember that is actually a couple rabbits that she ate just a week or so ago. And uh, oh my goodness, oh, doggy, that is smell. You're lucky that there's no smell vision on this. But uh, yeah. So if you woke up this morning and said, "How does a 20 foot snake poop?" Uh, now you know. Yeah. Did you guys know snakes poop? You're you're spending way too much time on it. <laughs> I almost turned the camera off. So wait, let me ask you something. So you got tired of the scat videos. So it's like, you know what? Let's go to snakes. Because you know what? I got a sexual thing for snakes. I honestly wish his algorithm took him back to that little Down syndrome kid who dresses himself in his bedroom. I hope his algorithm take him back to that. That's a lot better than what he got us doing now. So Jared, please, please search. I need you to search some more videos of Down syndrome swag so you can get back on track. Oh, uh, well, snakes food, guys. Anyways. Hey, Epic, ladies and gentlemen, do you, would you rather talk about sports or snakes having uh, doing blowjobs? <laughs> well, well, Pedro. You want Pedro. to talk about Pedro, woke snake on, isms? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, Pedro, Pedro. Snake poop, I can I can do without. Snakes giving each other blowjobs, I'm here for that. I would love to hear the story of snakes giving each other blowjobs, Pedro. Don't know how it's possible, but I'm here for it. It looks like pretty, stew meat. I'm pretty sure somewhere in that algorithm, Jared's got Wolverines having sex with rabbits. <laughs> Again, Pedro, there are certain things I'm That's here for. One, Pedro. I am there for that. We can edit out this whole sports show and talk about Wolverines fucking rabbits, dog. I am there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared. I don't have a show for that. <laughs> In other news, Shannon Sharp has agreed for a buyout from Fox Sports and will be leaving the company and the show. The network. Leaving the network. Jared. The network. That's what it's called. He will be leaving the network. What do you guys think about that? And I guess the other question is, has Skip Bayless's racist antics chased off another black co-host? No, Jared. They, they weren't racist. They were just antics. <laughs> I watch okay. the show every day, so I'll tell you that. He's not racist. 
with his antics. The thing that makes me really sad about all these situations is all of the black pundits who he's teamed with are, is actually way better at reporting than he will ever be. I mean, Stephen A, I love Stephen A on that show with him. Even though Stephen A is way more ridiculous, I like listening to him. Shannon Sharp, I like listening to him. I don't like listening to Skip Bayless. There's no takes that Skip Bayless will throw out that I can really feel informed by. So He's good at giving hot, stupid takes that make you kind of like get your blood boiling to be like, what is he talking about? And then argue about it. I, I honestly think that he needs to be replaced and they need to have it the Shannon Sharp, Stephen A show next or something I, like he He needs to go. Well, they're on different networks, Stephen and uh, Stephen A. They, you might get that. You might get that on ESPN. You never know. Yeah. I think with Skip Bayless, you got to remember he he basically started this whole debating on shows. It was it didn't happen. It started when he back in the day. I think it was around it had to be before oh four because I was still in my apartment in Berkeley as a my, the, my college apartment. ESPN started this show called Cold Pizza. It should have been called No Pizza. It was horrible. Best part about it was, you know, had had like this girl named Kit that was on Real World as Thea Andrews, and it just it just was bombing. I was trying to watch it, but it was bombing. It's supposed to be a different kind of sports show, and then they would have Skip Bayless come on and do segments, and he would just debate. And they realized, like, according to some numbers, that was like the most watched times of that show. They were like, let's have Skip more, and then Cold Pizza became basically Skip show, and it was just like Skip and someone else debating. I forgot who it was. Rob Parker, I think it was Rob Parker then. But, uh, you know, sometimes things come to an end. I think now lately he knows how to push the needle. From what everyone that worked with them say, they don't dislike him. But Monty Jones liked him, said he's the nicest guy in the world. Said, but the problem is, is that he wants to show he's the sole creator and everything of the show. And if it don't fit, it doesn't work with him. You know, Shannon's been growing. Shannon's been growing. He wants more of a voice and he's not getting it there. They're not going to change the show for him. I think Shannon's tired of talking. I'll be honest. I haven't watched the show that much in the last like month because I'm tired of it. It's Tom Brady. It's LeBron James. It's Dallas Cowboys. During the NBA Finals, they'll talk NBA Finals. But still, even now, like the other day, still had like two Cowboy segments with nothing going on in between the finals. And it's just the same thing over and over again. When Tom Brady bought a, part, a small share of the Raiders, I mean, you would have thought Tom Brady won a Super Bowl, announced he was coming back. I mean, every segment. And I think there was an upset, though. I think Shannon did get upset. There was an episode. They were Tom Brady again. And then Skip Bayless had the nerves to say Shannon Sharp was jealous of Tom Brady's career and that he's still playing. And Shannon was like, I'm not jealous, right? He's like, my career ended. It was over. It was hard. I, I was tired of playing. I was done. He was like, when I ended, I was done. And Skip said he was jealous of his career and, and Shannon pulled off his glasses. He was upset. And he was like, I don't know if you understand this, Skip. Like, I, I, I'm, I ain't no, no, no. You act like I'm some slouch. Like, I, I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm a gold jacket wearer, too. So I think yeah. since then and then the DeMar Hamlin comments, which I'll be honest, I thought people took DeMar Hamlin comments too out of context. I, I wasn't that upset with Skip Bayless tweets about DeMar Hamlin. He didn't say nothing bad. Didn't say in other news. Oh, Damar Hamlin will be helping teach CPR classes. Shut the fuck up. You serious or are you playing around? <laughs> I mean, that's good, but I mean. So this is what happened. Shannon Sharp is basically the kind of like the color t commentator on that show. He talked about this. He said that, you know, they didn't know it was going to work. So he praised Skip, you know, for giving him a chance. And he grew his network. But he so when Skip went off on Shannon with all the, the Tom Brady stuff and all that stuff. He's seen Shannon getting more, uh, he's seen Shannon shining a little bit. So he tried to break him down because look, you're not going to take a white man's spotlight. You're not, you're not doing that. You're not going to definitely not going to do it on my show. I brought you up here, you Negro with your big, with your big lips. You need to tone it down a little bit because you're getting a little too popular. The most the black people have ever done, they did it here in America under white people's help. That's that was that whole argument. You seen Santa growing, you seen his his podcast is I think what is it? I think it's top five. And I don't I don't even think his podcast is that good. Because he's asking he's asking straight questions. I like it when he's more animated. I think the one with uh Ultra Cinco was pretty good, but that was that, that probably was like the best one, the Ultra Cinco yeah. one. 
But his his podcast is blown up. But I'm with Pedro. I like him more on the show than I do on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Like he can't host and ask questions, and like his it don't come out well. Yeah. But if you ask me, but his podcast blown up. But the problem is he can't continue. It's actually owned by Fox. Well, no, they gave him that. They gave him his podcast. He's taking his podcast with him. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah, Uncle Shay is taking. He's taking it. That, that's in the article I sent y'all. He was going too much on Skip. And you, if you notice, that's when he split up with Stephen A. When Stephen A started to glow a little bit too much. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, we, we got to, I got to go somewhere else. I need, I, he needs to shine. I don't know if you can bring this up, Jared. They have the, the, the people that replace them. It's like eight people. They, they're thinking about to replace Shannon Sharp. Ray Lewis was one of those people. Oh, one knee is for the team. Two knees is for Jesus. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm yeah. not on that list. I'm not on that list. You need to be, you need to be. But when she- no, after your Bill, after your Jim Brown comments last week and Bill Cosby comments, I don't think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> no, so Shannon said that Skip is like those those hot takes that Skip come up with is like off air. Although he's like everybody said, everybody likes him. Everybody likes Skip outside of the job, but he will go off. Yeah, when he I, I've heard a story. Hot takes, hot takes. Yeah. In person, like, like, so this dude really believes all this goofy stuff. He said yeah. that in the background, he was like, LeBron James ain't all that great. That's how he got the show because they was arguing. It was like, wait a minute, this would be a good guy to debate, debate with. Even though he brings up terrible points, but he just yeah, says hot terrible. takes. Well, yeah, that, I, I remember I heard a story about where it might have been on the Levitard show. They're like, those two guys, you know what I'm saying? You have the white guy uh, debating with the black guy. That's like almost like as good as boxing, a white guy versus a black guy. Like, you have the the race he play in that. there, yeah, and you that. also have the fact that like when they were off cameras, this Skip Bayless is like, "Oh, you want to see you want to see some fireworks real quick? Hold on." The cameras came on, and he gave some crazy ass hot take, but he did it just to do it for the for the cameras. He he is a high level uh, uh cracker coon as we like to call him. He's a cracker coon, and he be doing it at the highest level. So that can wear on people though, and sometimes you can coon out and go cross lines and start a fissure that's gonna lead to the imminent departure of your budding star co-host who, you know, probably has more credibility to speak on things, especially when it comes to the plate experience and what it what it means to have that understanding of being an athlete or playing in the sports world and, and, and all that goes into that. So uh, we're going to see. But Jared, be careful before you start blaming people for being racist and shit like that, man. What are you talking about? You're part of my cutty corner shout out because of that. <laughs> I mean, because Skip Bayless, most of their argument, he's arguing how Jordan is his way better than. No, than, no, 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 argues, no, 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 no. He'll he argue just, how Michael Irvin's the one of the greatest receivers ever. I mean, well, he's a Cowboys yeah. homer. I understand all that. It ain't no that. racism, and the, the man is not a racist. Now, don't don't just call people shit like that, man. Well, what 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 makes this show go? A white man arguing with a black man. What makes show go is just he just willing to that's, argue. And that's argue part and of argue. The, that's part of the racism that's inherent in our country. Racist antics. Hey, Pedro said, "Yeah, but, the, the one, but there's more white, white people that hate." Let's get all right. Let's get him a white co-host. No, 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 no. Let's get him white co-host. Just don't, don't make. make just don't toss someone a racist if you don't know he's racist. Oh, I'm just he hasn't it. done anything to be legit racist. Don't call him a racist. Well, no, no, he might not be. Don't a just throw that it. shit out there. He, 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 look, you're not no, having no. a bigot, man. Don't even throw. Uh, no, that no. Shit there's out. a difference between. Well, that's the problem. Is that you're? Yeah, you're, you ain't watching enough of the you show. Ain't you ain't woke. You don't even show. know what woke means. <laughs> exactly. Nigga, how Aaron say the most wild shit and then be like, man, don't cross that line. We don't talk about. I don't want to say kill somebody. Don't call somebody a racist, nigga. nigga please. <laughs> you talking about there's between me talking about somebody already dead and you talking about and want me to announce I'm gonna kill somebody. That's a different thing, Jerry. Me <laughs> making fun of someone that's already dead and, ha- and maybe the way they died is different from or wishing it, oh, death man, on people. This person again. You wish I, death on people. I ain't the only people I ever wish death on are people that are two people in this world. Those that, you have your throat slit listed. Hold on, Aaron. My you got a throat, throat slit list. list. Aaron, you have a bad Aaron, Aaron, you, you, got a you, throat you come in all list? kinds of sideways, bro. You wrong on this one. I'm not going My back down. My throat slit list nope, only nope. only contain two type of people, Darius, <laughs> and that's people who still catalytic converters and those who pop fire works on any day that's not fourth of fucking july and rapists <laughs> and rapists oh dang well and especially child last... rapists trial rapists that, 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 that. <sighs> Jerry, my throat syllabus basically considers a child rapist they can slip that throat right away before the trial starts 
So you're in consist- court. But you're I, if I was on the jury, this is why I never make jury duty. Because as soon as they call and they say, hey, man, this has to do with It'll be like a Uncle sexual Ruckus assault on the jury. of a child, and I'm going to say slit the throat now. See, now he thought he was going to get off of that old I'm blind excuse. But oh, boy, he had another thing coming. The jury will now go off and deliberate on. Guilty! That nigga is guilty! <gasps> Sir, settle down. You have to go deliberate. I don't need to deliberate. Hang, Hang that, that nigga, nigga now. now. I got the rope right here. Aaron, that, mean, Aaron that means your list consists of my mama and half the people you work with. <laughs> Slit the throat. I want to feel the blood. The blood. I want to feel the blood still being warm. I want it to feel it get cold. <laughs> I want to watch it coagulate. Somebody. Well, Slit the throat. in other irregular internet, compliments of AG3 for Pride Month. <laughs> your name? My name is DeMarco Fleming. Are you gay? I'm bisexual. Are you top or bottom? I'm a top, dom top, aggressive top. Can you describe what yeah. dom top means? Dom top means, which means I grab you by your back and neck, put your face down, ass up, and fuck the shit out of you, and have you walk crazy for days. Walk crazy for days? Crazy for days, which means you'll be real sore, and you'll be calling me on the phone. Daddy, DeMarco, I need help. I need, I'm, I'm sore. Give me some town oil. That's what that means. Okay. Uh, honestly, I don't think I can handle it, but I appreciate your honesty. I know you can't handle it. I can tell the way you walk you can't handle it. My dick is big. They call me King Kong in my pants. I know you can't handle it, but I'll make sure I go real gentle with you. Because you're cute. Thank you so much. I like it gentle. All right? Okay. I got you all Thank day. you so much. I cannot kiss, though. You cannot kiss? No, I have a boyfriend. He has a boyfriend. I got yeah. a husband. What does that mean? You can't <laughs> see the engagement ring on my neck? Get with the program. My name is DeMarco Fleming, all right? Period. Thank Period. you again. Holla. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. Got Thank you. you. You're awesome. I need that dude. I need. I, I sent that for my boy, Knit Money. I'm hoping that, you know, this Pride Month, he might find out some things about himself. <laughs> Pedro, what do you think? <laughs> I just want a Christian world. I want to go back to Christianity. I'm going back to church. <laughs> if we don't want to go back to church. <laughs> Pedro, going back to gang banging. <laughs> <You'll... laughs> right, where's Smokey? Yeah, bring Smokey Robinson. <laughs> happy Chinooka. I have no idea what Chinooka is, but happy Chinooka <laughs> because they said so. We can have this prayer session. Pedro, hey, you know you. <laughs> now we're watching Snakes Have Sex. <laughs> Snakes did not have sex. Wolverines, <laughs> fucking bunnies. <laughs> Snakes having fellatio. <laughs> Marines having raping bunnies. Your algorithm's all jacked up. What the hell is going on? Prior- AG3 sent that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that po- You know what happened? That, that all popped up because someone sent me something about, <laughs> about the new parkway, and it was called Facepalm Reddit, right? Like things that just make you face oh, face. It was like, yeah, facepalm yourself. And that was under that Reddit. Pedro, you gave that same talk. You know you gave that same talk to the women at FATCO at Register 30. Yeah, I sure did. It was like, I stuff your head down. Have you calling me daddy? Saying, hey, hey, daddy, can you call somebody in, in toiletries to get me some Tylenol? Register, register 30 in uh, the grocery section. <laughs> Were there women in the grocery section? And other irregular internet... <laughs> It is Pride Month, so we have white pride. White American NBA players, they got podcasts, they got nice hair. Spot up shooters who get hounded on defense, assuming that they went to Duke. It's not a crazy pretense. White American NBA players, when you inbound pass, you better be aware. They come off the bench, they're the energy guys. Your uncle's favorite player, but you don't ask why. White American, white American, white. Yeah, man, you might have to get off TikTok, man. You might be the oldest motherfucker on TikTok right now. You about three years away from being the Bill Cosby of TikTok. My favorite part of that song, though, is like your your uncle's favorite player, but you don't, you you don't, don't ask, ask why. why. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard that the first time, I actually didn't get it. It took me a little bit. And I was like, mm, but I then I realized, <laughs> ah, racism. <laughs> Duncan Robinson was balling today. Then uh, in other sports news, the NBA Finals is tied 1-1. When the show comes out, it might not be 1-1 anymore. But with the Heat winning a game in Denver, does this change your prediction or how you think the series will play out? It changed my prediction because I had them in four. Remember, I didn't want to predict. I just wanted it to be uh, an entertaining series. So hopefully this game, too, will lead to that. What did you see in the game that was the main difference 
um, in the outcome after Denver kind of cruised to, I wouldn't say an easy win, but a comfortable win in game one. Oh, it was easy. Miami storms back after being down eight in the third quarter to win the game, uh, going away until they almost blow it and won by only three. Can Miami actually pull off this upset? They can, but, you know, I mean, they still have nobody for Jokic. They can. They can. They can. But if they don't, I won't be surprised. They can't. They're outmatched. They're outnumbered. It was a bad game by the others. Um, All the supporting cast paid bad today for Denver. None of them had a good game. Uh, They were missing assignments. I seen two people chase Duncan Robinson on a pick. uh, Not Caleb Martin, but... um, the point guard wide open for a three. That was goofy. I have never seen any deep. Oh, yeah. Gabe Vincent. Gabe yeah, Vincent. And, and, and it wasn't even like a ball that. pick. It was an off ball off, thing. Yeah. Off action. Ball wasn't even on that side. That didn't make sense. Both yeah, of them was play, running and chasing play the same really player. Stupid. Yeah, it was yeah, really bad. Really it was, I seen some like like special needs type. <laughs> and it was, damn, Pedro, damn. Goodness, y'all. <laughs> y'all chasing. <laughs> just chasing the ball. They looked like junior high schoolers out there i'm like wow. these are some hot takes <laughs> they Jesus. skip the bayless game. wish you could give takes like this <laughs> they stayed Jesus. in the game she said yeah. nba players look like special needs players no, that's, no, no. that's misunderstanding the darius no. <laughs> played well i mean hold on hold on <laughs> Just because i said the word look you don't think i'm talking about the word played pedro well, you said look. I mean, I just realized you realize know, Pedro said that's a I'm not, misunderstanding. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not looking at laughing. The dudes, I'm not looking at the dudes on the bench, Pedro. I'm looking at the dudes playing. Like, what are y'all talking about? See, this is what happens. This is why I can't stand Jared. It's all Jared's fault. He starts to like put this thing in the ether that everything I'm saying is so is a misunderstanding. It's that's called true. slang, Pedro. You are old. You are 80 years old. All right. When somebody says good looking, they don't mean good using your eyeballs. Pedro, all right. It's called slang. This is stupid <laughs> stuff, Pedro. Adaris. I didn't want him to look look uh, special needs. <laughs> oh yeah. shit! All right. I can't stand Joe, man. Uh, Adaris, did you see any of the game today? <laughs> yeah, I only caught the last quarter. Uh, but man, I will say it ebbed and flowed. He were down fifteen at one point, but they started the game up eleven. And so way back, then lost the lead again, then build a big lead in the fourth. I think that that's exactly where Miami wants to, you know, really not being able to control anything, going back forth, having these little bursts and spurts. And I'm just happy they won, man. I didn't see, I didn't see a lot of the nuance of the game, though, so I, don't, I can't really call, like, who was leading. It, it sounds like Jimmy played a terrible game until the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, and it sounds like Jokic did what Jokic does. I think he ended with like thirty eight. When I was looking, yeah, like thirty eight, sixteen, and seventeen or twelve or something. I was like, dang. He ended so, with forty one, thirteen, and four. That's how. That's how you know the others played. He's only had four assists. He's got yep. missing shots. I'm liking those off balance shots by Jamal Murray, but he got to find a good spot, man. Like he can't rely on those shots too much longer. So it's no. going to be taxed on his body. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. They played. They played dumb. He was getting balanced shots in the first game. They was they was missing, but they played good defense. This this game they just played bad defense, and you can tell certain parts of the game. You can just say see how, like Aaron said, Eric Spolstra might be the the coach. The well, they did start Kevin Love today, which yeah, I think uh, you know changed things up. The, he had a really good game efficiency wise. They shot 48 percent from the field. 49, basically 49% from three-point range, hitting 17 threes to 11 for Denver. And they got to the line 20 times and made an 18 out of 20, so 90% from the line. So they were really efficient today. Look, it, it seems to be a big deal. They didn't get to the line much in game one, and their threes weren't hitting the way they, you know, had in the past. So if if the Heat can somehow, you know, be efficient and hit their shots, this series could, could turn, turn a little bit. But I still think, you know, Denver... Denver, if they don't decide to, you know, shoot 33s and they just they shot 52 percent from the field, if they just go at the hoop, Miami doesn't have anybody that can re- really, you know, control the the paint. Like Bam Adebayo is a decent shot blocker. Jim Butler is a good defender, but they don't have anybody that can really deter you from getting to the hoop, especially you got Jokic there and you got guys that are big and athletic. Just keep going at the hoop. Don't don't settle for too many threes. Uh, that's what I would say for them. You know, what um, didn't factor in, Jared. Hmm. 
What didn't factor in is the elevation. Elevation did not factor in. Maybe it factored in against Denver. Maybe they got tired. <laughs> well, actually, they got an extra day in between the last game, though. Remember, they were going every other game, and they got an extra day of yeah, rest, an extra day, sense. an extra day, and that that can help with tired legs, especially going seven games the series before that, and being at an elevation, you have an extra day to continue to acclimate, get a practice in, get your sweat in, get your breath in. That was that was crucial. If they had played yesterday, which I thought they were going to, I was like, there's no way. I don't. I think Miami is just is would be reeling. But that extra extra day, especially a late game on a Sunday, that wasn't like a twelve o'clock or one o'clock game, five o'clock game, whatever it was. Uh, that that gave them, gave them a little more time. So we'll see. We shall see. We're gonna go back down to sea level, below sea level in Miami, and see what happens. Can Miami swing this series and take a lead after stealing one in Denver? We will find out. In other news, in other irregular internet. Piedro, this one's dedicated to you. Hello, ladies. My name is Dr. Tung. So you need to get rid of the toys and let Dr. Tung take care of you, okay? (laughs) Such a small penis. Jesus Christ. Get rid of the tongue and come against this regular. I ain't going down there because you you stank. No wonder I ain't get no calls for the Skip Bayless show. One person talking about a regular sex, and other person over here calling them racists for no reason. <laughs> it's a slippery slope, bear. In other news, I went to the Giants game today in McCovey Cove, and uh, in the first inning, Aaron, this one's a, a regular giveaway for you. Uh, the Giants were doing giveaways for uh, Hispanic Heritage Day or whatnot. I, anyways, they had a giveaway in the first inning where they gave an entire row in section, I don't remember the section, they gave an entire row in one section, Blu-ray 4K uh, DVDs of Creed 3. What do you guys think about that? (laughs) Who the hell got a 4K DVD player? And who trying to, I mean, listen, if you ain't seen Creed 3 already, you ain't trying to see it now on 4K Blu-ray, man. That's stupid. And what the hell that got to do with Hispanic? I even know. I would I'd much rather have, listen, this was my power to be. Uh, for the whole row, y'all don't win anything, but what we're going to do is the row in front of you, we're going to have Jonathan Majors come and choke out everybody in this row so you can get some better leg room. All right? That would, I would much rather respect that other than getting a stupid DVD, Blu-ray, whatever. I agree. In NFL news, the 49ers bitching and complaining paid off. The NFL made a rule that will allow teams to carry a third emergency quarterback that will not count against an active roster spot on the day of. What do you guys think about that? That's a stupid-ass rule, man. First, the 49ers were one of the teams that complained because the rule used to be you had to carry three quarterbacks. And they complained that that we should we should be allowed to carry two in that last position. We use it how we want it. Look, there's at least seven guys that don't touch the field. I'm not even talking about special teamers. I'm talking about like they don't touch anything, right? And my thing is this: for those guys, one of them could be a quarterback. But because the 49ers got four quarterbacks knocked out during the year, they want a third quarterback. Like that would have helped them against Philadelphia, man. Imagine if we could have carried look the third quarterback for most team really sucks. They're just a guy that holds a clipboard. That would have been the Niners' fifth string quarterback if they were allowed to carry one, right? So let's mm-hmm. say that rule existed. Do they really think against Philadelphia that I, I can't even name a third the teams that have third string quarterbacks we can't name? Well, they could have Jimmy Garoppolo had been rehabbing. And there was talks that he was, you know, that he might be ready. And people were like, well, do you let Jimmy Garoppolo take over? Or do you keep it Brock Purdy? And they kept it Brock Purdy. And then Josh Johnson. And I just don't understand why they didn't have Jimmy Garoppolo active That's on the off chance. He wants an extra. He wants, he wants an extra running back or extra. He dressed four tight ends. Mm-hmm. That's his fucking fault. Yeah, no, I was I was I was a little perplexed, perplexed by that. Even if you don't expect Jimmy Garoppolo to play. If there's a situation where you're like, we just need somebody who has experience in this situation, who can throw the ball a little bit better than what than what Christian McCaffrey or like Jimmy Garoppolo on one leg is could throw better than what Brock Brock Purdy could do at that game. So why why wouldn't you have a guy with Super Bowl 
NFC Championship, Super Bowl, and extensive playoff experience active that day. I just didn't, I didn't get it. This is how Niners just blame everybody else. So just taking a loss, you got your ass kicked and take it. It's like, let's find every rule and reason why we lost that we can say it's not our fault. Well, that might be a reason why, sadly, although the Niners play a style of football and have a team that I think is still in its window to win a Super Bowl, that's a reason why I think they might always come up short because they, uh, they're they that team that's the big bully. But when they get punched in the mouth, you see how they respond and they... Uh, and they respond they, worse. They respond uh, worse. Blame everybody else for getting punched in the face instead of standing up and, and fighting back in a way that was... Uh, you know, say not just being a bully. They thought they were the bully. Somebody and else's fault. Everyone knows that when a bully finally gets stood up to by a formidable foe, the bully ain't ready for that shit, and they don't know how to. They don't know how to react, and now they start blaming everybody else for why they got their ass whooped. Every year, it's somebody else's fault except theirs. In other news, Tom Brady became a part. Did he become partial owner? <laughs> yeah, he became partial owner. In other news, Tom Brady became partial owner of the Raiders and bought a, a equity stake in the team. Uh, what do you guys think about that? And will Tom Brady be the first player owner of a team? Because Jimmy Garoppolo got some feet issues. Come on. No, he won't be. He, he You know Tom Brady's retired, man. Uh, there's more photos of Tom Brady on a yacht right now than there is of him throwing anything. He's done. He even said himself, he's done. I just think it's kind of fucked up that like you know, the team that started his whole lore and his ability to even like be considered the goat as a quarterback, even though I like Rob Parker called him the lo- luckiest of all time. It just, it seems like a slap in the face. Why would y'all let him buy in? This dude started his whole career on a sham by beating y'all with the tuck rule. Fuck that shit. The tuck rule, some bullshit. And then he, he'd be cheating him and his whole entourage be cheating for two different periods of time, getting other titles. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just think it was bad taste to let him buy in. Uh, Mark Davis must really need some money. You know what? That move to Vegas, maybe it wasn't as profitable as he makes it out to be. Maybe he's like, hey, man, he wanted a yacht. More, The more eyes and more controversy is on the Raiders is always good. That's the only way they like the Lakers. <laughs> That's the only way they're going to make money is by being popular. It's whatever, whatever they can bring attention to the Raiders to get them some revenue. So, yes, they're going to say yes to Tom Brady's money. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't like he got that much money, but Garrett, it wasn't no. like it's a huge percentage either. This no, isn't like the Warriors. The, eyes, the Warriors, the Warriors, you know how they sold part of their team to equity firm. Now, that was a big chunk. This wasn't like that. This is more like that Jay-Z buying into the Nets, where you that way you could say he owned her, but he really ain't. He owned about as, Just he owned about as same much I own as the Packers. Same thing with uh, the Dolphins. When all they had all those celebrities taking a piece of the dolphin. Yeah, yeah, they don't own enough to really do anything. They need the publicity. So they say, hey, Tom Brady owns this part of the team. Buy some jerseys, niggas. <laughs> all right. What happened when you got that idiot as a, as a coach and they turn around and sold everybody out? Mm, yeah, that's uh, McDaniels is he, he going to be gone after again. He might got two more years of mediocre and bad play, especially with Devontae Adams starting to there's, there's rumors of discontent with him and him being like, I'm a, I believe in the team. I believe in the team. We're going to do what we need to do. That's, that's all I can say. He ain't juice no more. They're talking about they about to lose all their pieces. Ramfro about to be gone. Waller already gone. Yeah, that He's was gone. stupid. That trade. Yeah. Um, it made no sense. Yeah. Anyways, oh, well, in other irregular internet. All right. Well, let's get to Cutty Corner shoutouts. Cutty Corner shoutouts. Cutty Corner shoutouts is the segment we end the show on where everyone gets a chance to rant, complain, or highlight something positive in the world. Cutty Corner shoutouts. Cutty Corner shoutouts. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Aaron, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? I do. My Cutty Corner shout out goes out to Jared this week. Jared earlier today in this same episode made a claim 
That's Skip Bayless, racist antics, he said. This goes out to something he said also. I think it was late last year or during last year when Kanye West basically was getting canceled for his uh, Jewish comments. I was reading an article today, and I found this out, watched a video on something, and then went through, did my own research, found out Jared was calling, saying, how could, how could Adidas fire Kanye West for his comments when they're a Nazi corporation company? Found out they were not a Nazi company. Not only were they not a Nazi company, Adidas, there wasn't even Adidas back then when the Nazis. It was two brothers that owned the company, Dassler Athletic Shoe Company. And as a matter of fact, the brother who name was Adolf Dassler, Nickname Addy gave a pair for free in 19 was, I believe, 1936 Olympics to Jesse Owens. Mm -hmm. He he loved athletes. They were the farthest from being being Nazis, though. Both brothers. Now, it was a crazy story. I found out in the future. They went different directions. They went different directions. One started Puma. One started Puma because they hated each other. Now, this is when the, the rumor came out they were Nazis because they were so mad after the war. When they decided one brother went, was still like in the war, the other one was forced to leave and forced to reopen his factory to make shoes and stuff for the Nazis. Then when they realized they didn't have enough soldiers and needed war weapons, they forced them to change his company. The other brother was stuck in the war, left his, his unit fell apart, got arrested by Russia. Right. That sounds and like then, he was a Nazi. <laughs> no, he, no, he. No, I mean, there were a lot of soldiers who were not Nazis for the Germans. Right. There are a lot of people that were drafted. It's, it's kind of the same Just thing. Like how we had a lot of soldiers in America. Jesse Owens always said this. He when everyone always say, oh, Hitler disrespected him, didn't shake my hand. He said, I didn't feel disrespected by Hitler. He was supposed to leave at a certain time. He actually waved to me. He said, I tell you who disrespected me. FDR disrespected me. Oh, yeah. Not only yeah, did he yeah. not shake my hand. He didn't call me to the White House to congratulate me. He was the most celebrated. This still Olympic. goes back to Darius's driver, you know, analogy, Aaron. You're still driving. Just like you're no, still giving a hand but what job. I'm saying, they like, weren't, dude, they still, weren't, no, still. no, no. What happened was the, the rumor, the reason why people thought they were Nazis is because both brothers wanted to take over the company, right? Even though they got along great before, after the war, one married a woman, he didn't, the other one didn't like it, this and that. So they both started just throwing out outrageous claims that the other was a Nazi. It was proven that one of the brothers even hit Jewish people during that time. They, they just threw out those flies to each other because they hate each other. Never even spoke to each other again. One brother started Adidas, the one named Addy, named it after his last name. It was Adolf Dassler. And the other brother started Puma. And they were in that same small German town. And it was so bad to the point where certain restaurants were back to one side. And certain bars back to one side and not the other, and they would check your shoes to see if they would serve you or let you into the bar. And one um, of them provided footwear for Nazis. <laughs> no, one of them was forced to, just like when our factories, when World War II happened, even in America, factories were forced to change. Ford Motor mm -hmm. Company can no longer make cars. They were told what they had to make. The old who Jeeps was, and tanks. Yeah, who was a company, the also a company that was forced to make the radar? Right. That's what happens during war, Jared. You get forced to do something. You got to remember change on their own. They were Ford, forced. The the companies during COVID were forced to make masks and hand sanitizers. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just it's not about it's not about being like a lot of people didn't support the Nazi party. I've been to Germany. Met a lot of older people, met a lot of people. They were not in support of the Nazi party. I hear they did a better so job of reconciling about. their issues than America has its own. They do, but this they is did. just shout out for you, Jared, for throwing company. I didn't. I never said that. You misrepresenting me. You nah, misunderstanding. Nah, See, you over here nah, doing calling uh, Darius. No, nope. I'm in. Oh, here he is. Here he is. He to use not... you, Darius, to, to prove himself right. Hey, you got to my class action loss. Speaking of Darius, those brothers' action not only did it lead to all these innovations with sporting shoes and all that, but because they couldn't get along and they were the competition forced them to innovate. But it forced them to not look at the American market and let Nike sneak in to become the number one seller of shoes, of all shoes. Number two is actually Adidas and three is Puma. The other right. brother, Randolph, had a contract with Pele during the World Cup when he wore Pumas. And part of his contract was he had to bend down so many times, like at one point in the game, early in the game, to tie his shoe. because they, so they, the so they, so they can see the logo. Yeah. Here, I will, yeah. I'll say this. I'll say this one. I'm highly impressed by this segment of your sneaker history. Uh, two, Jared, uh, F you. I've been trying to get the segment that Aaron is doing right now for about a, a, a year now. 
You know, uh, I'm you liking listen. the segment, Darius. I would love for you to have this segment, man, because it, it it had my juices. Flow. Aaron, Aaron, I'm a, I'm impressed. I mean, the 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 thing about Adolf, so Adolf is Addy, Addy Dossler, uh, the yep. Dossler family, the that, brothers. That shocked the, me. The Puma, the the Puma, the the Force. I mean, everything you're saying is 100 percent correct. The one thing you are missing out mm-hmm. on is that the factories. One had a German factory. The other decided to move his factory to Switzerland. Yeah, before... I was going to say that. Shut up, Jared. And that's where they really started doing Pumas. And mm-hmm. because of that, they actually were helped. So this further doubled down on these dudes and Nazis. Uh, Puma factory, the reason that they have so many black athletes, the Pele's, the South Americans, the Jamaican teams, is because Switzerland was a hub for immigration for Africans for a very long time, they were considered a free area for immigrants to come and start a new identity. And Adidas was one of the biggest, or sorry, Puma was one of the biggest hiring parties of that. So I think that's a, yeah, that's really dope. And why do you and, think uh, it, Switzerland was a hub for African immigration? Thank, thank, because thank they're, they're running away from people like you, Jared. No. Thank you, it's because thank you The Swiss were invading Africa for the cacao. And they already knew. They said, you know what? Let's get some. Wait, hold on, here. hold on, man. Cowards. <laughs> no chocolate comes from Europe, bruh. Pedro, oh, yeah. do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Uh, you know who else got their month from Africa? The gays. <laughs> wow. Whole month. Oh, my God. I, I don't condone this before you even start or agree. <laughs> They took the whole black history. Movie yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to remove said, myself. It said, "Hey, the, the Negroes have a Black History Month. We would like to have sex with the same sex people. We would like to change our gender. We want our equal rights, which they should have, which they should have. But they had to steal it from the Negroes." They had to take it from the Negroes. Do you believe all the white gays took from the black African nations, the celebration of African Americans? Just the white gays, though, not not the black gays. Black gays deserve both months. They they deserve uh, Black Pride Month or this, uh, February. They they deserve uh, free Free Slave Month, June sixteenth. And they deserve Gay Pride Month. The blacks, the black gays are okay with me. It's the white gays that stole from Africa, African Americans. How dare they try to get their equal rights as African Americans? White gay people, you should be treated just like black people. Wrong, unequal, less than. Okay. I don't know what you're fighting for. You need to be treated just like Negroes, you white gay people. You hear me? Apparently, Pedro is uh, uh it, to honor uh, Pride Month is wearing the costume of. My name is Demarco Fleming. Are you? <laughs> he dressed as Demarco Fleming all month with a black <laughs> tank top. I never really actually thought there'd be a day where this cancel this podcast would get canceled, but this might be it. What? Well, wait a minute! You want white gays to have the same rights as black gays? No, no, no! I just know that the white gays control the podcasting industry, nigga. <laughs> Adarius, do you have a cutty corner shout out? Listen, if you look it up, just don't look it up on TikTok, nigga. <laughs> I gotta be looking. He gotta be looking at Doctor Ubar Johnson. That's what we gonna ask. He probably gonna be in, but I'm gonna ask. Him. Man, hey, hey, chocolate start in Africa, right, Doctor Umar? Facts, oh. right? Facts. Help me give these facts. brothers some lashes. Facts. Oh, uh, listen. This week, not cutting corner. Shout out. Goes out to homophobes all over the world. I'm doing this for five months. Now, I'll start by saying this, because I think it's important to say. Not important for me to expose what I'm about, but I think it's important to equal the playing field and let people know what I where I stand. I am a very heterosexual male who is a married man, married to a uh, 
It was uh says DeMarco Demon, whatever that dude's name is. No, sir. I'm married, to, <laughs> I'm married to a female with female pronouns who has a vagina, who identifies as a vagina. I have a dick. I identify as a man. Him, he, with a dick. I will say this, y'all. I don't know where it's cool. Where it's cool, where you, if you're wherever y'all from, or the listeners, whoever y'all is, it is not cool to be broke. I have done a lot of stupid stuff for money. I've done a lot of dumb stuff that hasn't worked out. I've I've been I've been in situations where I shouldn't have been for money, but I've been broke enough to really put myself in these situations. I will say this, man. Doing an act of gay stuff for money? Well, that will be the easiest decision I've ever made in my life. I have spent a long time in my life being broke. So if somebody offered me $2.5 million, folks, bring the dicks. Bring all of them. Oh, okay. I have no problem. Oh, I was going to ask you how many. Bring them all as long as you're paying me. All right, I must be paid because gay people in this world they're not getting paid to take dicks. It is a privilege to take a dick for two point five million dollars. I would be privileged. So my critical shout out goes to gay broke people and homophobe broke people. All of y'all need to not be worried about being broke. If somebody's offering you two point five million dollars, do something, strive for some change. I'm gay for pay. That's all I got. Okay, you heard it from Darius. Please bring the gay to the show. Cut me my five, I'll take five percent. My Cutty Corner shout out goes out to Netflix. Aaron talked about it a couple weeks ago, and now I'm talking about it. These motherfuckers done done the worst. My Cutty Corner shout out goes out to capitalism and Netflix. Call this entertainment Marxism. Cultural Marxism, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Because... Netflix is part of the cultural zeitgeist. What is part of the culture, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm getting woke on Netflix right now. Thank you, Ron DeSantis, for helping me understand what I what wokeism is, even though you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Dumb motherfucker. But and it goes out to him for the, fuck that fool. Anyways, my question is: you said sh sh be a friend, show love, share a password. You know what? Hey, that's tight. Then all of a sudden you're like, hey, to have multiple people watching your screens, you need to start paying more. Okay, I did that. I shared a password. I realized, you know, you guys might want to, you might want to have a certain way. You can't have multiple screens. Fair enough. I started paying a higher rate so I could have multiple screens watching. Good. If I pay for a subscription that is all about, it's streaming. It's about accessing it whenever and wherever I am and want on whatever device I feel fucking like. Whether it's my personal iPad, it's my phone, it's a PlayStation, it's a DVD play well not a DVD, it's it's my Comcast box, or it's my goddamn friends TV, or my friends system, or my family system. It don't matter. I pay the subscription to have it on demand, bitches. Don't be trying to say, oh man, you're gonna have to pay more now. You gotta is this resubscribe this one. This is part of your home home group. You gotta hey, every time you got this, you gotta say this is part of your home group. We're gonna send you an email and you can verify that it's part of your home. No. I paid for this. I've paid premium prices. I paid more to y'all so that I can access it whenever I was. That is why streaming does not work. This is why I told y'all why I got all these shitty DVDs I be buying for a dollar all over the place at thrift <laughs> stores, Best Buy, uh, uh, closing blockbusters, and loves truck stops is because when the shit hit the fan and the internet go out, which will go out before the power, power will be on be longer than the internet. When all that shit go, when streaming is not accessible and y'all ain't got no internet to stream, y'all had a service, whatever the reason is, I'm going to have my DVDs. But y'all motherfuckers is doing some fuckery shit because the, the whole concept of capitalism is you should always be making more money for your stockholders. You should always be making more money. That's not how the world works. That's not how life works. We are on a finite planet. If this was an infinite planet, then we would have multiple of these planets and things would be just always growing and doing whatever. No, it's finite. Capitalism is one of the antitheses of nature. And that's why I don't really fuck with it a lot. I live in it. I've learned in it. I live in a system that propagates it and espouses it as though it's some altruistic or, or righteous thing, which it is not. 
That's why we're about to have a goddamn another recession. The bow burst, we go through another recession. Poor people get squeezed more, rich people get to buy up more of the wealth and value. That's all it is. It's a cycle that continues to go over and over and over again. That's physics. That's science. Tricky. Is that working with mercury? It's high science, man. It's art form. So all I'm saying is, economically, Netflix, y'all make hella money. How many people, how many Netflix subscriptions are there? How well, many? They lost a lot of them. Yeah, because they started to try to ch charge more and putting out shittier content. I agree. Well, they, they, sure. you got to understand, they're in a shitty point because they don't have commercial or anything. So they don't have any, the only revenue stream they have is subscribers, right? Uh -huh. I, I was telling this to Ryan, the only revenue they got coming in is subscribers. They're not Disney who who have other revenue streams such as being Disney and having ESPN and other things and movie companies and things like that. All right, well, well let's just put it this way. Let's put it this way. Netflix. But they're still being cheap. I agree with you, Jerry. Let's just say, standard no, with Disney. They got, they got an ads one. They got a standard ads one, $7 a month. Or you get the basic no. $9, $10 a month. I they thought, said, wait a minute. Their stars are asking for more money, aren't they? Ain't they it don't matter. The, the companies are doing the filming. They're asking for more oh, money. Oh, well, production companies. No, no, no. The issue, Pedro, is not that. It's not the, That's not the issue, Pedro. The issue is, is that the people who get to make all the decisions and they have the most power always feel like every quarter they need to make more money than the last. Yeah. That is the issue. That's it's the problem. Fun. We, that's wrong. That's, that's, that's wrong with America. The, no, no, no. Yeah, that is what's wrong with the economic system known as capitalism and the and the and the, and the, the stock markets and the markets. The issue though is is that we as regular people, the regular people, we can ask for a raise every once in a while. We can hope to get a raise every once in a while, but we don't get a raise every quarter. Hell no, not even every year. So why the fuck should all these corporations be getting a raise on their revenue every single quarter or every year? That's the question that motherfuckers need to talk about. All these stupid yeah. ass anti woke MAGA woke people too need to start questioning the system. The system is broke because the people in the power get to have a raise every quarter, get to have a raise every year. It is literally physically, physics unsustainable. You watch anything in this world, it does not grow unchecked unsustainably. And if it does, it eventually crashes. And that's what we're doing. Netflix got 250 million motherfuckers subscribers. Let's just say they make it, they do everyone is $10 a month. $10 a month times $250 million. How much money a month do you need, niggas? That's 2.5 billion a month. You telling me at 2.5 billion a month, you need to start squeezing people that don't get a raise every quarter or every year even more now? Fuck you. And fuck your goddamn horse you rode in on. And fuck the whole goddamn financial system y'all be profiteering on. And y'all can go suck a sideways dick from my boy, Dominic Fleming. I hope he comes up there into your boardroom and fucks y'all sideways and turns y'all into walking all kinds of awkward for days. Take that, Netflix. Take that, take that, take that. Oh, fan mail. Oh. Fan mail. Fan mail is just when Jared emails himself. Fan mail from uh, <laughs> from uh, from Toyd Toyd Wagner. He wants to know Trump Mary Kill. Christian Walker. Wait, Dude, I ain't answering this for no. I'm not either. Jared. Christian Walker. Hey Todd. Jackson no Holmes or no, Chet no. Hanks. No Todd. Who was the second name he said? I don't even know the fucking second name. I didn't ask. He said Patrick ask Mahomes, that. and then he and then Jackson. Jackson Todd, if Mahomes. I was you, I would sue Jared for slander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're throwing Todd, Todd name sue, down the drain some shit you Todd sue Jared for um, misrepresenting you. Trump Mary Kill. You know, just attach your name to that Brett Favre or Shannon Sharp and replace. Just cross out <laughs> Brett Favre, put your name and Jared for Shannon Sharp. I've been accused of misunderstandings for about six months now. Are you, are you trying to say no I'm far longer than six months? Maybe like hey, 16 hey, years. Hey, guys, misunderstandings better than lying. <laughs> I think he's lying on my name. 
Yeah. <laughs> so you go. You go throw the lawsuit too. You attach yourself. I want, to I want this, is, and this is now a class action, baby. No, a class yeah. action got more days. Right. Uh, well, anyways, uh, yeah, guys, something to chew on. Think about that one. Christian Walker, Jackson Mahomes, Chet Hanks, Trump, Mary Kill. I ain't answering that shit, Jared. Not answering. Boycott. I, I, I'm I'm marrying Chet now because I want <laughs> dual citizenship. You want to be Jamaican? Come on, hey. that's the worst country you want dual citizenship with. I, I, want, I want Jamaican dual citizenship, so I'm gonna marry Chetna. Uh, I'm gonna Trump Jackson. Uh, I'm gonna Trump Jackson Mahomes, and the Christian dude. I'm just gonna kill him because I don't know who he is. So Christian Walker. Sorry, you got to die. Uh, you don't remember? Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Herschel Walker's son. Welcome to Jared's Gay Pride Month show. <laughs> 